I'm Dr. Ruth Fernandez. I'm a consultant psychiatrist practicing for uh, 14 years and uh, my areas of interest include uh, stress and anxiety related problems, depression, grief therapy and I also uh, love working with women. I think the most common uh, um, issues that we see in elderly people is depression, uh, also uh, grief uh, because of the loss of a close uh, family member, maybe the spouse, and also dementia and uh, cognitive related problems like memory loss. Uh, anxiety is also something that we common. way we could consider that it is uh, uh, definitely uh, more depressed uh, a country than the other countries. Uh, one thing could be the population. Uh, the second thing is uh, lack of uh, services available. We know that uh, there are very few uh, mental health professionals um, uh, available to such a vast population. Uh, the third thing would be uh, the stress uh, because of population, poverty, uh, economic problems, uh, also we are linking stress related problems to pollution, noise hazards uh, and uh, I think more or less uh, it's also because of uh, so much of uh, uh, economic issues uh, that we are definitely uh, in stress with work and uh, you know, uh, income and uh, the population basically. So I think the most common uh, obstacles uh, now, the, when you talk about the self, it would be the motivation. Uh, motivation and courage to seek help, to reach out for help. Uh, sometimes it's the motivation and willpower to work on themselves. Because uh, for mental health problems, I personally feel you need to make a lot of lifestyle changes. Uh, so I think it's uh, the courage to reach out for help and also motivation to work on themselves. Uh, when it comes to external, I would definitely say stigma is a big problem and uh, uh, it's everywhere. Uh, so that uh, hinders uh, people from seeking for help, seeking treatment and I think that's the biggest issue we uh, professionals are facing, uh, people with mental health problems are facing, which needs to uh, be eradicated. I think that's the biggest issue. So um, I, I would definitely give a lot of weightage to exercise. In fact, I recommend it to all my patients uh, uh, who come to me with anxiety and depression. Um, because I think exercise is a, uh, is a heavy lifestyle. It also increases endorphins and it's a natural way of taking care of your mood and helping uh, you know, focus better, it helps the concentration, it helps you to remain fresh in your mood and mind. Uh, so I think uh, exercise is something which is very like underrated in uh, therapy uh, and it should be recommended for every, uh, every person. Now in terms of nutrition, I would say a healthy, well-balanced diet is something which every one of us should follow. And uh, if you're talking about improving maybe the cognitive uh, abilities or memory long term, then I would think about omega-3 fatty acids, foods rich in omega-3 fatty acids, and also avoiding stimulants like tea and coffee, which are linked to stress and anxiety, and certainly staying away from alcohol and other substances. Uh, the family plays a big role in depression uh, when somebody is facing depression uh, because uh, you have to be supportive to the person, you have to encourage the person, you have to motivate the person. Supportive in a way when you listen to the problem, validate his symptoms and difficulties that he's facing and not just brush aside as something that you say just buck up or just you know find your courage and you know 
do what you were doing before because the passion is not that. Uh, it's also uh, offering encouragement and trying to be a part of the treatment uh, uh, of that patient uh, by you know, encouraging the person to take his medicines regularly, helping him to you know maybe do exercise, you know take care of his meals and diet. Uh, and uh, society, I would say, plays a role in you know um, understanding mental health problems like any physical problem, uh, not looking at it uh, with a bias or stigma, and uh, you know being more open to talking about mental health problems. When uh, I especially think of women, uh, we always wonder whether you know women are in the whole life cycle of vulnerabilities. Because when it comes to women, uh, you know we are more prone. Uh, women are more prone to sexual abuse or physical abuse. So maybe uh, you know as uh, menopause sets in, we do see a lot of uh, you know depression and anxiety cases, and also. Uh, as uh, you know, she ages. If there is a, a, a death of the spouse, then again she would be more prone to uh, depression or you know uh, mental health problems. Uh, we could think of even um, uh, an event where uh, you know there is this empty nest kind of uh, picture where the children move out of uh, the home and uh, you know the parents uh, being in the elderly age group have retired from their jobs and uh, you know they've been cut off from that environment familiar environment of being very active and uh, you know having a structure to their day and suddenly they have nothing to do and again with no children being around that could be a milestone for mental health issues especially in that But the thing about grief is that the more you suppress it, I think the more it gets uh, delayed, the grief process is delayed and it can also get complicated. So I think dealing with grief, the best way is to talk about it and uh, for family, for uh, trusted friends and close people, it's important to listen to the person and not uh, you know give advice which says don't talk about it or you know uh, not allow the person to kind of uh, talk and uh, you know ventilate all that he feels or thinks about the person who he has lost Uh, it's not a very uh, it's not a very common uh, thing to have support groups in India, but we do see that you know uh, nowadays there are a few support groups coming up in uh, in certain hospitals. Definitely do have support groups like we run a support group uh, related to new mothers. Uh, so it definitely helps because sometimes you don't want to talk to uh, a doctor or a professional but when you are in a group setting you understand that you are not alone you have uh, there are other people who face similar problems uh, you try and get uh, you know encouragement and support from the people who are going through similar problems and i think it validates that you know this is not something which is uh, you know, happening only to me and uh, the way others are coping, I can also cope. So I think it, uh, it, it's something which should be encouraged and I think we need more support groups definitely.